Hey everyone, it's Heaps EVA. Welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. Speaking of appreciating things, I got to say thank you to a lot of people that gave me comments, suggestions, ideas, even criticisms of my video that I uploaded with Charleston, South Carolina's fire department in it. Because many great ideas come out of that and I wanted to prove that I was really listening to the people that sent me things. And the first way to do that, and the first thing I'm going to do, is add this playlist to the channel. And this is going to be called simply Old Firehouses. Let's not get it too complicated. And what my goal is, is in my travels and some purposeful trips, is to photograph every old firehouse I can find, whether it's still in use by a fire department or it, it's it been um, removed from service and it's either vacant or being used for other use. Because as long as they're still in existence and the building is still standing, it's still a tribute to the history of the organization, that's for sure. And if it lives through being changed into some other use, that means it was built well and will stand the test of time. I can't say that about every be beautiful old firehouse. Some live on and you'll see pictures of them as I go along, but there are some that didn't make it and have already been torn down. And the only thing we'll ever have left of those kind of buildings is photographs in museums or people's collections or in fire stations that exist now. And notice I said fire stations, and let me touch on that right now in the first video. And hope historic buildings, whether or not they're still used or not, is secondary. And when I say the word fire station, as long as I don't use it in the wrong time, I'm talking about buildings that have been recently built that have all of the really nice. Um, well-built and technological improvements that some of the newest fire stations have. And that deserves its own channel, its own playlist, etc. And I don't know if I'll quite get to that because could you imagine just photographing the fire stations that have recently been built in Los Angeles County, which is numbers in the hundreds, I could take up an entire channel just on that subject matter. So this is going to be just one more piece of a bigger puzzle of things I'm going to add to the channel. I'm not getting rid of gameplay, especially with fire and EMS play. Um, but I just wanted to add some stuff in, especially as I'm away from home and I can still do things and post things without being next to my computer. And that was what I was hoping for. So there wasn't this big gap in videos and new uploads on my channel. So... Had to get that out of the way. Thanks for being patient with me. So let's get into the first photograph and let's talk about where I'm at at the point I took this picture. Welcome to the city of Moscow, Idaho and the nice old firehouse that is still in use by Moscow Volunteer Fire Department. Awesome, awesome. There's fire apparatus parked outside. The building is in exceptional shape. It's on a great main street, which is not always the usual thing. And it was a great day to show up in town. It wasn't cold. It wasn't too hot. The only thing that I couldn't control is where the sun was by the time we arrived in this community. And so it's a little too high and a little too much in the eyes of the lens of my camera, which is my iPhone. And so I'll apologize right up front for some of the photos and some of the color being a little washed out, but I the photos are good enough to give you a great idea of what this old firehouse looks like, give you some history on it, and give you some directions on where you could go on the computer. You don't have to leave your house where you can look up some um, web addresses and get more information and some awesome old black and white photos of the building in its earlier history, which I don't have access to because obviously we're not in that time frame. So 
let's talk about this photo um, right off the bat. Probably the first question everybody's going to have, how old is this firehouse? Let me start by commenting that it's a question that requires um, at least a two-part answer. As you can see, this is a what we would call in the profession is a four-bay firehouse, meaning it's got four roll-up doors where apparatus can respond out of. If you look real closely, right in the middle of the front of the building, you may be able to notice a little bit of a color difference between the building that's closest to me, standing on the corner diagonally away, and the building that's further away where the fire engine's parked. There's a good reason for that. The building part that's closest to me where the ambulance is parked and the door closer to me than that is the old part of the firehouse. It was built and opened in 1927. The other part of the fire station, which is attached, but was built at a separate time, is a two-door station that was finished in construction in 1954 when they realized they needed expansion and place to store more fire equipment. One of the things I'll tell you right now, and, and I will include all of the links and web links to anywhere that I'm talking about for this particular video, there's some great info and a really well-written document about the history of the volunteer fire department that speaks a lot about this old firehouse over many periods of time. The fire department came into existence in the 1890s, so they've been around for quite a while. But one thing I was wondering is, was there another firehouse before this one? Well, thanks to that history lesson that I gave myself yesterday, I determined that they didn't have a formal firehouse built for the fire department until the 1927 building was constructed. They used barns, sheds, and anything else they could find to distribute equipment all over the city so that they were close to just about everywhere that they could have a fire, but they'd never build a fire station until this, this 1927 building was built. Not as unusual as you might think it is, especially in small communities where anything with two doors, a, a, like a double door configuration, could fit old fire apparatus, um, especially like hose carts, um, those little um, pump type um, tubs that they used to dump water in from buckets into a tub and the guys would pump the handles back and forth. Those things would easily fit in somebody's front yard or front door, really. So it shows you how far we've come to the point where a fire department like this one, which is still volunteer, needed to build an actual brick and mortar firehouse to store its equipment to keep it from being damaged. Obviously in Idaho, I can imagine what winters are like here. And so it probably snows pretty good on them. They've got to deal with that. And so when you leave stuff out, the cold gets to things, it damages hose, it does a lot of things. Building a building makes sense when your community has the money to do so. So we see the width of the building, the depth of the building. It is pretty deep for a firehouse. The little building to the far right, to the right of the tree, is not part of the firehouse. Believe it or not, even though it's attached on the one end, it is not part of the firehouse at all and never has been. In fact, the building that stood there before that building was constructed was a gas station. And the only special thing about that gas station is a longtime volunteer fire chief of Moscow's fire department just happened to work there. Other than that, it's, it's somebody else's building. And you can see to the far left that it's attached to other buildings on, this is Main Street right here. Um, it's attached to or near, it's actually not physically attached, but you couldn't hardly fit a quarter between there, um, with a building that may have been a store or something else, certainly not part of the fire department today. So before I get off of this page, there's one thing I want to point out to you that honestly, when I was in Moscow, Idaho to take these pictures, I missed it totally. And I kind of feel foolish about it, but it is what it is. 
So in this picture, you can barely see it, but if you look straight up from the closest corner of the building to where I was standing when I took this picture, go straight up and look above the street light that you can see over the roof line. You see what looks like a little character up there. And if you squint real hard, depending on whether you're looking at this video in, in full screen or you're, you're looking smaller, there's actually a little um, figure there on a pole. And when I saw this finally, when I was photoshopping the, the picture to make it bigger and cut out some of the extra um, frame around, um, I realized it was, it, it was looked like some kind of a, a soldier or something like that. Couldn't get any information on it. Wasn't having much luck on the internet. So I started trying to figure out if I could see it closer. So let's look at the next picture, which is just that picture zoomed. And you can definitely see there's a character of some sort there with his right hand up because, and why do I say right hand? Because his back is to us because his suspenders, which is what that is and white, is crossed. And if you've ever worn suspenders, especially if you've worn suspenders on protective clothing as a firefighter, you know that in the old days we cross the suspenders so they wouldn't fall off our shoulders. If you just connect them up and over, if you move the wrong way, the suspenders tend to work their way off your shoulders. So we, they started crossing them or tying them in the middle of your back with either a leather patch or a clip. So now I could see it a little better. I still thought it was a soldier of some sort. So I'm going through my photos and looking because most some of my photos were really washed out because of the sun and its angle. But look what I found in this one photo once I zoomed in on it. I did catch the whole thing without the tree or anything else being in the way. And so here's this, what I thought was a soldier facing the other way with something in its hand and its other hand raised. And I wondered if it was one of those kind of decorations like you see on fences where the arm swirls around as the wind blows. But I have no documentation to show me that. However, thanks to the County Historical Society um, paperwork, I did find that this is actually a piece of the fire station. It's a piece of fire department history. It's not as small as you might think it is. If you look at the window down below it, this thing is in the corner front of that building. So it looks at least three feet tall. And if you read the historical documents, it was constructed and installed on the 1926 part of the firehouse when the building opened. And it is actually supposed to be an old time fireman. I thought that was amazing. Now, I wish I'd have gotten a picture of it from the other side so I could see its face. Unfortunately, I couldn't get into the alley because there were cars blocking the way. It's really tight back there now because of all of the other construction that's happened over the years. So I did miss that. I will work on trying to find some more photographs of it. I could not find any other additional photographs of that little character up there. But I'm very happy that I found that information. Could share it with you so you guys know it. You didn't have to go digging through uh, five or six, seven pages of, of uh, web addresses trying to get that info. And it's something that's very particular to this fire station and this fire department, which I always like to see. So let's move on to the next photo. And here we are, basically there were cars in the way, so I had to take a little bit of an angled shot at the 1927 part of the firehouse. Um, one of the things I'll tell you to do, and the, like I said, the links will be down below, is check the city's website, which has a, a section for the volunteer fire department and the county historical society reports which i'll give you links to as well that have some pretty good photos especially a photo of the day that that firehouse opened for business in 1927 it's pretty cool and what you'll find out is while the top of the building looks somewhat the similar the bottom part of it obviously has been changed over time to accommodate larger fire apparatus You'll see the fire trucks that were parked in it on day one in 1927 are much smaller than even the ambulance, which is probably larger than their 1916 P-51 
piece of equipment that's in the black and white picture, this ambulance is probably larger than that. So that tells you how things change over time, and at least they're able to do that and keep the building in service. The old building had wooden doors that um, were bifold and opened in, and there were literally windows above the fire apparatus doors. None of that still exists. They had to put roll-ups in eventually, but the uh, center door for the people to go in and out probably looks almost like it did before, except for the probably that door is a stronger, probably steel door, where the original was wood. They didn't worry about it as much back then. Um, pretty nice. The MFD thing is nice. I always like things that are unique to different um, firehouses across the, the states where I go. So this is nice. Very proud thing. Very, very nice thing to be proud of. Sorry, I almost said that backwards. And so this is the 1927 version. Here we have hiding behind engine 26 is the 1954 edition, which added two more bays that are the same depth um, to the existing firehouse. And it still fits in that um, kind of historical firehouse character. But I found out something about this that I didn't know at the time I took the picture, which kind of caught me off guard, but it made me smile a little bit is you know that the building on the right, the older part of the firehouse, was built out of brick. I don't know if it's um, got steel in it to tie the, every, anything together or if the brick is on un, whatever it's called. It doesn't have any steel in it. But the building to the left, which I thought was brick as well, is actually built of concrete walls that were poured on the ground and then tilted up. Then they're tied together, and then they put this skin on it, which is a uh, facade, to give it the appearance of being as close to the other building as they could. Um, obviously, from here, you can definitely tell the difference in color. The windows are a little bit different. Uh, by 1954, a lot of things had changed as far as construction materials. And it likely was built in 54 with roll-up doors on it. These might not be the originals, but they probably were something like it back then. So caught me off guard. Not a bad thing that it's concrete. That tells me that that building will last a long time and is built very well. And because it's concrete and is built very well, it can be used to support the other building if it was not as well constructed and keep it standing. And that's why it's probably still in service. Um, the volunteer fire department has three firehouses. They know them as fire stations and this is their fire station one. So that's that. So if we step back a little bit and br get it all in, I can't, you can't see the little guy standing up on the roof because he's behind the tree, but here's the firehouse. The, the sun moved just a little bit, give us a little more color so you can see the difference between the two versions. But yet, to me, it looks perfectly fine. Um, the only thing that's missing in this photo that you would see in one of the black and whites is there was a bell on a tower on the old side of the firehouse, then the 27 side, in the back. And you may have just been able to see the top if it still existed. But it, it appears that they had removed it some time in the past, I hope they saved the bell and it's in a nice safe place where everybody can see it, but it will last um, as a memorial um, for a long time because bells have a tendency to kind of slip out the back door, if you will. So that's the building as a good um, front view. It was tough to do the right side. Obviously the left side is blocked by a building and there's no windows on that side. Um, so this is the best shot I can get you. Um, others that I have shot, I've got better luck with. It, it's a learning process at each community that you visit where you might run into one of these buildings. So let's look at one more thing. And I did a little zooming in on the um, emblems that are attached to the buildings, both sides, over the doorways. And 
Most of us that are in the fire service recognize those emblems right away. But if you don't recognize them because you're not in the fire service, which is okay, go to Google and look up speaking trumpets and see what pictures you see. And picture those speaking trumpets assembled in a circle using the widest part as the out as the outer side of the circle and the mouthpiece that you would speak into is the inner circle. And in the old days, and a, one an older firefighter told me this, gave me this speech one day about the way a fire trumpet is used and the way that they're, they're a, a, a arranged for um, rank and stuff like that because we use the images in the fire service to designate rank in most organizations is that the wide side has to point out because the sound needs to go out the biggest opening and the smallest opening needs to be in the center so you only have to yell at one place you don't have to yell all over the place and spin around in a donut that's how these are put together they're using five trumpets because that's all that can fit in that circle without stacking and five trumpets designates a fire chief or in the case of this volunteer fire department was chief engineer which was a very traditional name for fire chief way back when some cities still use it some people or some agencies have actually stopped using that and just gone right to fire chief it it depends on the organization it's no big deal either way both are great um, traditional rank um, designations so these are across there. I don't know if they're handmade or cast. I would guess they're cast. Um, they do have lights in the centers of them. The red light is always another traditional thing on fire stations to advertise their location. And the white dot that you see in the farthest circle to the right underneath the flag is not a, a blemish in the photo, but is a spotlight showing light on the flag. And for those of you that aren't in the States, um, we have a thing here in the U.S. about if you're going to fly a flag, it usually flies from sunup to sundown. If you want it to fly 24 hours a day, you have to shine a light on it so that it's never in the dark. And so that's what they're doing there is shining that light on that flag 24 hours a day so they don't have to get up on a ladder and take it down when it gets dark. That's the whole thing about it. It's not a big deal. Um, it's just one of those pride things for the for the country's flag. So, where am I at as far as here? Oh, look. What in the world is that map doing there? Why would you show me that? The only reason I'm showing you this map, and that's why this, this particular video, number one, is going to be a little longer than some of the others I'm going to get you, but I've got to do some explaining up front. I feel like I do anyway. This old downtown for this city, which has about 30,000 people in it, had this really nice map just a couple of cars down from where I parked that has a great map of the old downtown and shows you where all the old buildings are, whether or not they still exist, what was their construction date, and then the orange colored buildings are buildings that are either newer construction or the buildings that replaced buildings that had been torn down, demolished, burned down, or something else had happened to them. Well, just south of the green rectangle that shows the oldest buildings in town, you'll barely be able to see the kind of beige square, which is where the firehouse is. What's important about that location is that I was telling you that this was their first brick and mortar firehouse. And before that, they used anything they could do to, to store their apparatus. One of the things they used was a shed and a lean to on the shed to store their equipment for the downtown fire company. Well, where the firehouse sits is where that shed was. So they had already owned that property. And then when they built the 54 edition in the thirties, they actually bought the parcel next to them, which actually had a building on it that was used as a store and some other things, but they were smart enough to think ahead and into the future that they'd probably need to expand if they were, if there, if there was going to be growth in the community, so they wound up owning that property. So when they did finally realize they needed to expand the station, they already had the land set up. All they had to do was work on how to build the firehouse. And from what I've read in the 
the document. A lot of the work was done by the volunteers themselves. So that's the only reason I do that. I like seeing these maps. All I try to do is narrow my search when I'm looking for old buildings where you have a congested downtown where an old firehouse can be anywhere and have any use, whether it's still a fire house and there's an apparatus in it or it's been turned into a restaurant or a business building or something. You need to kind of get an idea where they are. Most old firehouses are rarely on the main street because most cities wanted businesses to be on that street because that generated revenue. And firehouses were usually just around the corner or on the street behind where they wouldn't take up some of that more expensive rest, um, real estate. So that being said, hope you liked um, episode number one. I promise you that I've got at least three or four more in the, in the pipeline getting ready to be put together so that we won't have too much of a gap between them. Leave me your comments, your thoughts, your ideas. Maybe you know the location of another um, historical firehouse. Let me know in the comments for this video. I'd really appreciate it. At the end of the day, if you don't have anything that you need to tell me, no big deal. If you Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Or if, if you feel like you need to give me a thumbs down, at least kind of let me know if I made a mistake or there's something I missed or something important that I can correct and not make that mistake again. For all you guys out there, I hope you're going to have a great day or a great evening wherever you are on the planet. Hopefully everything's going your way. You know and I know we'll see each other in the next video. I'm getting to work hard. I am learning a new program to put my videos together. I've migrated to Adobe's Premiere Pro. It's a little bit different, but it seems not to be too difficult to learn. And this will be the first video created with Adobe Premiere Pro. All said and done. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Hopefully the weekend that's coming up is everything you want it to be. I'll see you sooner than you think. You guys take care.